Yes, kicking off our news, two, the two men accused of causing a grass fire in the northern suburbs over the weekend in front of court already. They spent the weekend behind bars. Andrew Wayne, Terence Hull, both aged 31, uh, were caught, uh, pretty much accused of recklessly using a angle grinder which caused a blaze and caused sparks throughout the area. So it caused a bushfire, tore through a property, destroyed a bunch of land and things like that. Yeah, right. So they're being investigated for that at the moment. In other news, Adelaide's Chibo Espresso Cafe is going to be taken over by Gloria Jeans. I saw this. So this is a huge deal. Uh, $2.7 million was the transaction for this one. So it's Gloria Jeans' effort to pretty much take over the coffee scene, take over all the Chibos. Well, I haven't seen a Gloria Jeans in a long time here in Adelaide. And uh, I see a lot of Chibos. Mm. I I frequent a lot of Chibos. And in my head, I feel like Gloria Jeans is not as good as Chibo. Mm, So, well, they're taking over. That's uh, that's their grand. (laughs) plan yeah yeah uh, i'm not happy about it (laughs) honestly i didn't realize you're such a coffee connoisseur for the the gloria jeans chibo debate uh it's less about the coffee it's more about the food yeah the food is good at chibo yeah they do a great salami sandwich that uh i feel like gloria jeans just won't do hey hopefully they keep those things around maybe yeah absolutely hey we've got our producer erin in the studio with us right now erin uh how how are you how do you feel on this debate Oh, well, actually, I'm a little bit biased because I used to work at Chibo. Oh, really? A okay. long time ago, yeah. So you I got was, it in your blood. I do, yeah, You absolutely. know the recipe to the salami sandwich. I absolutely do. I was a barista there for about five years. We're going to so have to have a chat off air. I think so, <laughs> yeah, and I think we might have to lobby this one. Yeah, We can yeah. band together. Not, and, not around and... Gloria Jeans? Again, I'm a little bit partial to Chibo. I've got that bias. <laughs> this so is a, this... I'm... I'm lobbying Chibo for this one. It's the new uh, secret herbs and spices for KFC. This it is just the, is. Se- the secret salami sandwich and coffee recipe. You need to tell us <laughs> off air. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I can't give trade secrets, right? Yeah, I just course. can't. <laughs> oh, that's all I'm about, just the salami sandwich. What else is happening? Uh, that's all in the news, but of course we have the Melbourne Cup as well. Such a massive day yesterday, and with the main race, race seven, a huge winner there. And looking at the return on that one too, was absolutely huge. There were some big winners around where we were in Glenelg. Yes, Horse 11, uh, Knight's Choice, ended up taking out the win, which, yeah, I feel like the Melbourne Cup last like four or five years, ha- the, the favourite has not even come in the top three, and the trend continues this year. With Knight's Choice taking it out uh, on Ladbrokes, the the fare was about $81 for yeah, the win. Yeah, wild. There was, when I was in the urinal yesterday, at, in the bathroom of the pub we were at, some bloke came in, he's like, someone's just won 400k. 400 And it got confirmed that someone there must have dropped a hell of a lot of money, but yeah, one on oh, this horse. That's ridiculous. <laughs> it is ridiculous. <laughs> it sounds unbelievable, but apparently, yeah, at Glenelg yesterday, yeah. someone caught that. <laughs> it wasn't paying that much money. <laughs> I have scoured the internet and found this article about a couple who are a bit a bit unsure whether or not it's okay to give their baby the same name that they were planning on calling their future dog. Yeah, it's a it's a predicament a lot of people won't face. I have to say, I mean, <laughs> most people aren't going to name their kid, you know, something after their dog. It's just. <laughs> I can I can understand if you love your dog, it's a respect thing, but yeah. usually dogs' names are pretty. Non for humans. Well, I think I think people that call their dogs human names, it freaks me out. It goes both ways. Right? Yeah. Yeah, like, oh, don't worry about the couch being all chewed up. That's just Toby. <laughs> Is Toby your dog or yeah. your son? Because <laughs> right now I can only see a dog there, but I'm not sure whether you're keeping Toby locked up under the stairs. <laughs> And in an effort to escape, you chewed the, up the couch. Yeah, those little uh, those little carrier cages that you put a pets in when you go uh, when you fly on planes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's Toby. That's Toby. Again, is Toby your son or your pet? <laughs> <laughs> is Toby the pilot? Is it? Is... <laughs> like, yeah, it really does throw a spanner in the works. So, yeah. So this couple, they they they're in this predicament, which I think is ridiculous. I think you can't be calling your son what you plan on calling your future dog no i think it's ridiculous but they went to reddit and asking is this okay and they haven't actually revealed what the name was like they're (laughs) gatekeeping it or like it's something just like really (laughs) i don't know rex or something (laughs) 
<laughs> the fact that they're not telling anyone the name makes it seem like it's really embarrassing. They want everyone's opinion whether they can name their kid after the dog. Yeah. The, but, the, yeah. But obviously, we want to call our kids Spot. Yeah, obviously <laughs> they know they're going to look like idiots if they're like, yeah, well, the name's Rover. The well, name's Spot. It's Patch. Whatever. We are going to Reddit asking whether it's okay or not. Like, someone commented saying, it really depends what the name is. Is it Muffin or Milton? <laughs> In what world will it either be any of those? In what world are you going to name your kid Milton? <laughs> yeah. And, or Muff? It's just stupid. I'd like to know if anyone's actually done it, really. But I think, I think for one, personally, no. You can't call your kid the same name as a pet previous or future. I or didn't current. Even, see, I don't even think it's about the name sounding. I think it's about you've named your kid after... This uh, dog that you know would sh- like scratch itself, and you know, <laughs> like it's a dog. <laughs> Don't name it after the dog. <laughs> Can you name your kid the same as your pet, Adelaide? I mean, has anyone done it? I mean, maybe it is like a respectful thing, you know, in memory of the dog to name your kid after it. I mean, I just feel like dogs, more common than not, right? Uh, have like a bit of a dog name. Mm. Yeah, there's so dog I, names and then there's human names. Yeah, I don't think it would work. I think you've got to keep it separated. I'm curious if anyone's done it or if you would do it. Yeah, and that's why I'm thinking you can't be calling your dog human names because what happens if you want to have the kid? <laughs> yeah, you're done for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you really like the name, you're stuffed. And once again, confusing. <laughs> got this text here as well. I didn't realise this. Someone's texted in, uh, Big Rick has texted in saying the famous Steve Irwin named his daughter Bindi after a past dog of his. Yeah, right. There you go. I didn't realise Bindi's named after a dog. No, neither did I. There you go. Uh, a bit of a fun fact for you this morning. Hey, I uh, had uh, another text here come in saying, no, it's weird. However, my mum's pets have all had human names. Fred, Jack and Bob. God, imagine trying to explain that to your mates and they're like, oh, does your mum have triplets? <laughs> you, would, you would assume that they're just a triplet gang, like this big family. <laughs> I think it also depends on what kind of pet it is, right? I think dogs avoid human names. I think cats I think avoid cats human names. Avoid human names. A lizard. But I think a, a lizard or a fish. I think you can get away with a human name. Of course. This one here. My daughter has dogs named as her middle name. Doggo's name is Lily from Blair. Okay, cool. There you go. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Middle names different, mm. right? Yeah. My dog apparently has eight different middle names. Oh, I would happily have Rex as my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds cool as. I think yeah. Tell him Rex Leaning. Tell him Rex Leaning. I can start calling you that if you like. Yeah, new nickname on the yeah. on the horizon. Rex. <laughs> <laughs> you want a treat, Rex? <laughs> uh, another text here. My ex and his partner had a dog called Indy. When they had their daughter, they called the daughter Indy and changed the dog's name to Bindi. No word of a lie. You can't go changing a dog's name. Well, I think it's similar enough uh, that you can get away with it. But, yeah, I also agree. You can't be changing a dog's name. Once you, once you stick with the name, you can't change that and backtrack. Just call the daughter something else, right? <laughs> Surely, yes. Yeah, Why don't you call your daughter Bindi? Plenty of names. Plenty of names for the daughter. And we got this one here. I always wanted to name one of my sons Barry. The missus wasn't having a bar of it. So when my old mutt passed, I named the new dog Barry instead. There you go. Yeah. Okay. I can get around that because Barry's a bit of an outdated name mm, anyway. Big right? Bad Baz, the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Adelaide, let's wind back the clock. The new quiz with a bit of a spin. Wheelie Wine Back Wednesday with Tom and Callum on Fresh 92.7. Yes, our favourite quiz show. It's Wheelie Wine Back Wednesday, the game where we spin the big wheel and take you for a spin through the decades from the 90s all the way up to the 2020s. Hey, this one is awesome. We've got a great prize attached to it as well. If you win, of course, you get tickets to Picnic in the Park. That's it. Not just tickets, a double pass so you and a mate can go along to Picnic in the Park. they got a, uh, a petting zoo for all ages. 
I'm very excited for the petting zoo. Yeah, I was going to say, honest. you stopped on the petting zoo. You're like, I'm not going to read out the rest. I'm sold. But the petting zoo is interesting. <laughs> There's no reason to read out the rest. They've got a petting zoo. But if you if you want to know what else is there, they've got the petting zoo. No, they've no, got no. Two... There's no point. Just There's, stop. There's Just a stop. petting zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Food trucks, bars, two stages with entertainment. So there's a lot there. It's a perfect way to spend your Saturday. Get around it and bring a mate. That's it. And we've already answered one question for you. If you land on the 1990s, you only have to answer two questions. And you could be winning a double pass to Picnic in the Park. That's a pretty easy going Wednesday morning. It's an easy Wednesday. You know, have your coffee, do a quiz, win some awesome tickets. Get around it. Yeah, first up, we're going to Kapunda. we got Megan on the line. Megan, good morning. How are you? How are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. Now, M- Megan, what, uh, what, what decade are you hoping to land on here? Yeah, 90s should work. 90s, okay. 90s. And, of course, right. yeah. we've answered one of your questions from the 90s, so you only have two left. It'll work in your favour very nicely. Okay, I'm nervous. All right, Aaron, you know the deal. You've got to do your best to try and land on the mm. 90s here. How's that wheel spinning arm feeling? Good. I've just done a few burpees out the back, so I'm ready. <laughs> the blood is flowing. Got a warm-up routine. You absolutely have. I train very specifically for this. So... I hope your arms aren't too dead from the burpees. No, no, no. The, uh, no. Again, I'm, I'm training, so I'm, I'm building the, the muscular... That, that yep. I need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're going to have to do a full rotation. You're on the 90s now, so I reckon it's going to be a big spin on this one. You're going to have to show off the muscles. All right, let's do this. All right. Spin, spin that, that wheel. wheel. Ooh, oh, actually, oh, actually. Oh, oh. No. What have we got? We've got the 2000s. Megan, how do you feel about the 2000s? Yeah, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> she should be all good. <laughs> all righty. We'll try to do our best. Hopefully the questions aren't too difficult. Megan, okay. first question. Which online video streaming platform was launched in 2005? Oh, God. Can I pass that one? No, no passes. No, there's no pass. Megan, oh, okay. it, what, do you, just, it, what video streaming platform? What do you, what do you watch online? Um... Where do you go to see videos? Oh, tick, not TikTok, not YouTube. YouTube is hey, you, got it. Okay. you got it. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, Megan, what, which dw- uh, planet was demoted to dwarf planet in 2006? Oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> um, Have a that, Megan. In our solar system, just name any planet. Which one was a, is named a dwarf planet? Yeah, this happened in 2006. It's not Mars. It's not Mars. It's not, not Mars. Mars. Not Venus? No, 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 can't go for a dumb <laughs> crack. He's up, he's up. <laughs> I don't mind it though. I don't mind <laughs> trying to just double. Just trying to get one in there. <laughs> Megan, stay on the line. We might be coming back to you. We're going to go to Michael over in Point Cook. Michael, which planet was demoted to a dwarf planet in 2006? Pluto. Michael, the astronomer, on the line. <laughs> He's calling from NASA as we speak. You only got one question left, and you'll secure these tickets to Picnic in the Park. All righty, Michael. Lovely. Who narrated the 2005 film War of the Worlds? I've got no idea. He's got a really iconic voice. Think of the yeah, the most iconic voices David in Attenborough. Hollywood. Oh, you know what? Good guess. It's a really um, iconic voice. No. I can see where your head's at for sure. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to go to Kelly over in Tali. <laughs> Kelly, uh, who narrated the 2005 film War of the Worlds? Oh, I have no idea. I'm going to go Peter Dunklage. Okay. I th- also incorrect, <laughs> but I don't, mind, I don't mind you thinking that. You know what? This, this person is the most... I would say requested person to do impersonations of when you're at a dinner party is the go-to <laughs> yeah. that everyone claims they can do his voice and they're really good at it, but usually they're not. You know what? Can you do a good impression of him? I, I reckon I could. <laughs> I'd done. love to hear it. Go All on. Right. For I'm a at, bit of a hint. I'm at a dinner party. <laughs> oh, that was awful. Jules over in Evanston, that, uh, that, who narrated the 2005 War of the Worlds. Ignore what Callum did because that, that was That terrible. might just throw you off too much. Just yeah, forget that. <laughs> It's the magnificent Morgan Freeman. 
She's, She's done, done it! it! Jules, you've just won a double pass to picnic in the park. How good! Excellent. Thank you, guys. Jules, next question. Now that we know it is Morgan Freeman, we can be open about that. How's my impersonation? Um, oh, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. A seven, seven? Out of, 7 out of 10 is dinner. Jules, that's, you are that's, generous. That's dinner party <laughs> worthy. <laughs> Effort. <laughs> yeah, the effort. Okay, yeah, I understand that. Uh, exactly. Jules, congratulations. You've just won yourself a double pass to picnic in the park for this Saturday. Awesome, thank you. Cheers, Jules. Cheers for calling up. Yesterday, we were out in Glenelg for the Melbourne Cup. Yes, great time at the pier. Yes, at the pier in Glenelg, uh, enjoying the day. And after the pier wrapped up, uh, we, went to, uh, we, we went and hung out in Glenelg for a little bit. I went and got a Euros. <laughs> Very hungry, right? Right, yeah. So who knows where this story's going? <laughs> you just <laughs> outlined the recipe. I'm I'm tzatziki, <laughs> cucumber, lettuce, I tomatoes. There was a bit of tabbouleh in there. <laughs> where I'm is just, it going? I'm just going through my day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I went and got a Euros. It was great. No, I went and got a Euros, and then uh, I was like, I got to go home, right? Just it wrap was, it up. It, yeah, I had to wrap up the day i got to go home. So I caught the tram from Glenelg to the city, right? And on my full stomach of a Euros, you know how you, do you... I don't know if this happens to everyone, but this happens to me. After I've eaten and I'm full, I get so tired. Well, you have a turkey Euros. You left that out of the ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> got a bit sleepy. Yeah, I went full turkey mode. No, I, 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 I just... I, I was full. I yeah. was satisfied. And I got a bit sleepy and I was on the tram and I decided, you know what? Uh, this this trip is boring. I'm gonna have a nap. Well, you had a little kip on the on the tram. I used to do this all the time on the way to school. So, would... are you setting an alarm though? Like, are you setting an alarm for? No, God, no. I'm, a, a a, I'm in a public place. Yes. I'm not gonna set an alarm and have people have the anxiety <laughs> of hearing. Meh, meh, meh. Also, people just looking at you, being like, "Is this? Does this guy think this is his bed? <laughs> like, he's got a glass of water next to him and an alarm clock." <laughs> No, when I when I went to school, I used to nap on the bus to school and uh, back home every day. All right, so what I, happened? I just I just knew the amount of time I'd get like a good five minute kip in on the way to school or on the way to home yeah. on the bus. So I was like, hey, I I could do this. It hasn't been too long. Yeah. So I have a kip on the bu- on the tram back to the city. Next thing I know, I'm getting shaken by this elderly couple, right? And they're like, "G'day, mate. Like, how are you going?" <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah, not bad, not bad. Why are you waking me? They say, where, where, where are you getting off out of curiosity? What did you say, Mum? I don't want to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> Tell well, the principal I don't want to come in. <laughs> Give me a sick note. <laughs> no, I was like, oh, I'm getting off in the city. And they're like, mate, we've been to the city. We're halfway what? back to Glenelg. So this is why you were absent for hours. <laughs> This is why I was absent. I fell asleep on the tram and I was so I was so tired. I slept through every single stop, including on the way back to Glen Elk. So it's gone got, all the way back there. Gone to the city, not gone all, all the way, way back. back. Half halfway, halfway back. back to Glen Elk. And I'm like, oh no, that's all right. I'll get off the tram. I'll get on the next one back to the city. Get back on the tram, sit down, find my place. I'm like, oh jeez, still a bit tired. <laughs> yeah. Fall asleep again Jeez, on the a tram. second time. Yeah. A second nap. Yeah, a second nap. You, you didn't know, learn from you... the first one when the first elderly couple woke you up. Well, when you wake up from a nap, but you're still tired, right? So I'm on the tram, like, I'll have another little quick kip. And I'm on, the na- I'm, 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 I'm on the nap train at this rate. It's a sleeper train. <laughs> right through Glenelg. Next thing I know, I'm getting woken up again. I'm getting shaken by another elderly couple. Like, mate, mate. Are you right? Where are you getting off? I say, oh, the city, like the raft. Yeah. They're like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're halfway back to Glenelg. Jeez. You've missed the city. I did it twice. It got to a point where I was like, screw this. I have to get an Uber. It's given the vibe of when you see in a movie, someone's accidentally been frozen <laughs> for 100 <laughs> years. You've woken up in the old couple like the Ra hasn't existed for 2,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Tom, there's a new update for Instagram that's been trialled mm. in New Zealand and it's a bit controversial what they're doing. So it's not here, don't fret. It's not in Australia yet, but it's getting a trial run over in New Zealand. Well, I don't like about this is New Zealand is like our backyard. 
it's so close. It's a stone throw away. Mm. So it's and like I it's... know what this update is, and I'm not about it. Yeah, it's not like it's an update in America where it seems, you know, far away, right? If they're yeah. trying in New Zealand, it feels like it could come here, and it's a little bit dicey. So pretty much the update says that if you zoom into someone's photo on Instagram, that person will get a notification to say that you've zoomed in. Awful. Why, <laughs> why, why, why would anybody... Well, okay, first of all, why would you want that notification? Why would you want to know the people zooming in on your on photos? On your photo. One, that would like... It, weird it, it you would, out. It would weird you out. And then two, I, th- I feel like everybody zooms in on everyone's photos. Yeah, no, it's a terrible update. And so, so now you're just going to look like, one, a creep, and then weird people out. I'm going to delete well, Instagram. Well, that's the thing, because it's like originally the idea was that the update exists because businesses want to see who's zooming in and say, like, say a suit, a tuxedo. You're zooming yeah. in and you're like, yeah, it's a nice suit. And maybe it shows that you have an interest in buying it later, even if you don't buy it at the time. And fair enough. But w- what you can do there, right, is that when you set up an Instagram account, you can make it personal or business. Make the notifications just for the business accounts and keep it off of personal. True, because the issue I find with this is that the amount of times there's a group picture, there's a bunch of people, eight people, I want to see who's in the group or whatever. You zoom in <laughs> and then they're going to get a notification being like, oh, Callum zoomed in on your photo. He's a creep. That's what it's saying. <laughs> yeah, they're going to out you finally. <laughs> <laughs> But that's exactly what everyone's up in arms about, right? That it can be misconstrued as a little bit weird and that you're zooming in on people's faces and whatever, their bodies, and, you know, they don't want to be seen as that. The thing is, I, 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 don't, want, I don't want to know people zooming in on my photos. I don't want to know who's zooming in on my photos. I think that would be weird in itself. Of course, as well, I'm on a public profile on Instagram. So I will be... What if I'm getting notifications 24-7? Uh, I'm not... <laughs> Yo, what are you saying? All right. You got, right. You got that thousands came out of wrong. followers that came zooming out in wrong. on you. Uh, what if I'm getting notifications just randomly because of random people zooming in on photos? I don't want to deal with that many notifications. I'm, I, I get... I, is, uh, notifications annoy me enough. Yeah, it's, it a, is. it's a terrible update. Uh, I feel like, yeah... Going to be swiping off the Instagram. I'm deleting Instagram. Big time. Uh, if it comes to Australia, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Tom, another crazy dating kind of phenomenon has come to surface. And I feel like these always come on our show because you see them in the news, all the articles we look at, and they're always bizarre and weird. Yeah, I mean, dating trends, it's its such a loose word these mm. days. Yeah, ridiculous. I don't, I don't like, half of them I just can't see people doing. Yeah, yeah, and this one is insane, but it's racked up about 3.2 million views, this one video, this theory about dating and right. who to be wary about when you're dating someone. And if they do this specific thing, then you should be wary because it's a red flag. Oh, God. Yeah, all right, what is it? <laughs> I'm already so, annoyed, yeah, by the yeah. way. It's an annoying one. And as guys who, you know, enjoy food and chips, this is going to particularly annoy you because the I theory eat chips is... chips every day. Exactly right. So the theory is that if you're dating someone and they're... Sm- it's called the Dorito theory. If they're smashing a bag of Doritos and they keep going for more and more yeah. and more Doritos, it's a sign that you're quite content and happy eating um, and staying with something that doesn't give you that much satisfaction because chips aren't meant to make you full. They keep you hungry, but you keep going for more. And it's meant to relate to relationships where if you're unhappy, you still stay there and keep wanting more and more as you do the Doritos. I love Doritos. So I love Doritos too. So, what can we uh, not? So, can we not be uh, with someone and smash a bag of Doritos? I can't I'm eat hungry. Doritos anymore because some <laughs> bloody dating trend has come out saying it's crazy. If, you're, if you're if your boyfriend eats Doritos, it's a red flag. Why? Why is it a red flag? I'm sorry. This annoys me the most because I really enjoy Doritos. Doritos in particular have a soft spot in both of our hearts. <laughs> They're a great chip. And the idea that, yeah, we Triangular? can't... Triangular? What, what other chip is that? What? We can't sit on the couch, lick our fingers, eat some Doritos <laughs> without being called, you know, a, a red slob. flag. <laughs> a slob, red flag, all of the words under the sun. So hang on a minute. So it's a red flag because you're content in eating Doritos, but it doesn't make you full? No. That's yeah. the whole point of chips. The point of chips is it's a snack food. You snack on it. You're not eating it as a bloody lunch meal or dinner or breakfast. You're well, eating it to snack in between your main meals. What's unfortunate is that a psychologist has backed her up and said there's merit to her. So now people are latching onto this. Well, she's an idiot. Well, I know the psychologist. 
psychologist for a fact in between therapy sessions would be smashing a bag of Doritos. <laughs> Absolutely. If I offer someone Doritos nine times out of ten, they're taking They're it. eating it. <laughs> <laughs>